So we can sing them one more after that. <laughs> and I'm sure you all knew what those were, right? Okay. Maybe we can sing one more. Um, heart of my heart. Okay. A flat. A flat. Yep. <coughs> are songs that if you go anywhere in the world and find bar barbershoppers singing, you can sing with them. 
So y'all have to learn them so you can sing with them. <laughs> yeah. so, I even uh, sang them in Alaska. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in a minute, we're going to get started in our worship service. I don't want to rush anything, but uh, uh, we're, we're going to get tired. <laughs> <laughs> we have other more uh, worshipful songs that we're going to sing during the service. Uh, and afterward, after all her service is over with, we'll be... We'll sing some more out in the hallway if you're interested. So we're uh, glad to be here. We're sunny forecast. Y'all know Bruce. Mm -hmm. This is Steve Yo, And what's this guy's name? <laughs> Don Snellaker. And I'm Roger Phillips, in case you don't know me. Uh, uh, Bruce and I are still members here. Yeah. And he still comes. <laughs> but I'm, I actually, I, I <coughs> want to come, but I'm helping out in a mission church down in the city. Uh, and uh, God is using me in, in a great way there, uh, but I do miss coming back here. I wish I could be here. Uh, so y'all pray for that church that's called, uh, uh, I forget it every time. It's brand new. It just started in January, and I still can't remember the name. Uh, it'll come. It'll come. <laughs> yeah. They say, you know, they say that, that memory is the second thing to go. <laughs> Y'all know this one, but I can't remember what the first one is. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's a problem. It's uh, Real God Church, Real God York, actually, specifically, Real God York. It's brand new work, and it started in January, and uh, we're meeting in a school right now, and um, it's rough setting up pews and chairs and setting up every Sunday morning, but... Uh, God is doing a lot of good things there. and Y'all pray for that church. Uh, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. Welcome to the Light in the Valley, Cadoris Church. If you've had a chance, look at the back of your bulletin for the announcements, as well as they so graciously put it on the screen before the service. Are there any other announcements? And before anybody steps forward, thank you, Sunny Forecast, for today. And there is a silver bowl out in the narthex where they do accept donations. So if you're willing to put a donation in that. Are there any announcements? Thank you, Caitlin. Don't run. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Caitlin Hall for VBS. This is your weekly reminder to please sign up to volunteer and get your children registered. Right now we have 10 so far, so we're getting excited um, for the children. We did just sign on to have Critter Creations come. They're going to bring a lot of fun critters for our Australian-themed VBS for you to touch and pet some snakes. It's going to be a great time. So volunteers, you can either sign up online or we have the sign up in the back. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. This is your last week to sign up for the women's camp, June 5th and 6th up at Camp Ader. It's going to be an amazing time, a good spiritual time, and a lot of fun and campfire and everything like that for us women. So the papers are out on the table in the narthex. There's a lot of stuff out there, uh, but sort through and come along and enjoy the camp experience. Any other announcements? Let me start with our opening scripture. It comes from Psalm 46, verses 1 and 2. God is our refuge and strength, and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Will you please bow your head in prayer with me? Dear Heavenly Father, you are a refuge for all who count, call upon your name. You have been a strong tower against our adversaries, and our flesh and our heart may fail, but you are the strength of our hearts and our portion forever. Amen. Could we greet one another, please? And 
When all of the adults are sitting down, if the wonderful children could come forward, we'd appreciate it. Good having you here. Very glad to be yes, here. Sir. Thank you so much. It's, it's nice that you guys are doing a donation plate. Good lesson. I'll, I'll mention that. You would turn in your hymnals, the red hymnal, to page 460, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, and please stand and join us in singing. Children, you want to come on up for a 
children's story. All right. Any other children out there this morning? All right. I have a couple things that I want to share with you, but I want to know first. Now, maybe I don't want to be uh, discriminating here. Do any of you have any a rock collection at home? You have a rock yes. collection? Yes. Where do you keep your rock collection, Lydia? Oh, okay. Anybody else have a rock collection? Yeah, I have two rocks at home. At home, too. Oh, wow. Okay. Guess I what? Have. I have. Jed has a rock collection. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe you all will have a rock collection after this morning, at least a start to a rock collection. This is one of the rocks in my rock collection. Okay. I have a rock collection, but I don't have it, like, in case. Any of you know Don Hubble, preacher, down, retired from down at Black Rock? He has a big rock collection. Uh, was really interesting when he moved. My rock collection I keep out in my gardens, okay? Because I collected these rocks when I was hiking along the Appalachian Trail when my husband and I were hiking on the Appalachian Trail. This one I think is very unique. Do you see some of the different colors in there? Beautiful. <laughs> well, thank you, Lydia. Yeah, Aren't, isn't that something? Would you, he's saying that it might be a diamond in there. Yeah, it, it could be, you know, and we do find diamonds around here or where? I think South Africa has diamond mines. Am I right on that? Say amen. Come on. <laughs> Just help me out here, folks. But these are my rock collections, and I have them out in my garden to remind me about all the different places that I hiked. But it also reminds me of some other things, because in our Bible, we have a lot of scripture about rocks and stones and I'd like you to read like to read to you a small portion from Psalm 18 I love you Lord with all my strength the Lord is my rock my fortress and my deliverer my God my mountain where I seek refuge now did you hear any words that make you, that tell about the quality of this rock? Let me read it again and think about that. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. And I seek you, and I seek refuge. There are a lot of properties. The way a rock is, is a property. The way you are you're made up of cells and, and all sorts of good things, aren't you? But a rock, what would you say would be a property of the rock? Hold it a minute. Heavy. Say it out loud. Heavy. 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 Okay. That's lifted. That's 50 pounds. Okay. <laughs> you can lift it because it's probably 50 pounds. I don't think it's quite that much, but <laughs> that's, that's a good thought. Um, rocks that would be bigger than this. Like if I found a huge rock out in the on the trail, would I be able to pick it up? No. <laughs> no, I'm too weak, right? Yeah. It's immovable, okay? Many of the rocks on the trail are immovable. Well, and what about... Can, can you, anybody do karate in here? Anybody yeah. out there do karate? Oh, hey, great. Okay, can you chop this rock? <laughs> no, you can't because it's solid and it's strong, okay? It's pretty, pretty solid. Uh, and there were a lot that were more solid than what that one is. 
I think a big sledgehammer maybe could break that. But you know, all of these things that we're talking about are kind of like the qualities of God. The scripture that we read, God is our rock. So God is what? Solid. God is immovable, or we could put another word on, in there, unchangeable. Our God is a God who's always going to be there. And there were times walking the trail when rocks would give us direction, okay? Like if there was a path down through the rocks, we would go on that path. We wouldn't try to make our own path, especially not if it would have been through rocks. So God gives us direction. And that's kind of good to think about how our God will help us all through our lives. And you'll find out more about the properties of God as you mature in your faith. So thank you for sitting so attentively. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we can depend on you as our God, our rock. And we ask that you would continue to lead our children. Give them, as they grow in your faith, a solid foundation and give them hope for the future. We pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now, if you do not have a rock collection, I would like you to choose a rock from here. Well, whether you have a rock collection or not. Something that it will remind you of what? What do I want it to remind you of? God and how solid God is. Okay, did you all get your rock? Yeah. All right. You can go to Grow Group now. Okay. I got one. All right. And it, if you have a pocket, how about putting it in your pocket? I don't have it. Oh, darn. Thank you. Okay, wow. There's some new little rocks growing there, I think. <laughs> you know, I, you mentioned that the diamonds in South Africa, did you know that there are diamonds in the United States? It's a diamond field in Arkansas. They actually push right up to the surface of the ground. And if you're lucky enough, you can find one. Uh, I'm not that lucky, so I never found one. <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, the donation offering at the end. We, we're very appreciative of that. We are part of a nonprofit organization, and uh, everything goes to helping us stay in process in as a as a chorus. Um, and speaking of chorus, we are part of White Rose Chorus, uh, and our president of the White Rose Chorus is here today, right over there, Dave Kelly. <laughs> so we're glad to have him here also. Uh, he's checking on us to make sure we're doing good. That's okay. But uh, when, you, when you think about these rocks, though, I want to go back to the rocks again. Faith is what we put in our rock, our Savior and Lord. And that's what we also consider that we learn a lot about faith from our fathers. So we're going to sing that song for you.
Thank you, Sunny Forecast. And uh, get ready if you have any joys or concerns, if you can go to the mic. I have several I'd like to uplift at this point. Uh, it is, again, good. Uh, these are joys and concerns. It's good to have Sunny Forecast here bringing uh, us joy on this sunny morning. Uh, and we will lift up prayers for Real Church, is what you said the name of it was? Real God York. Real God York. York. Yes. Real God York. Another church that spreads God's word. We want to uh, uplift graduates, some in uh, York County, I'm sure, and some uh, Westminster, McDaniel College had their graduation. That was one of our granddaughters, so that was good yesterday, and their graduation's coming up for many of us. And it's really good to see some of you back, uh, back after your procedures, and uh, just if you see someone who hasn't been here for a while, make sure you greet them after the service, please. We want to uplift the family of Clarence Ropp. Uh, he was the grandfather of our custodian, Sharon Kraut. So please keep that family in your prayers, the family of Clarence Ropp. Are there any other joys or concerns? Hearing none, please, we'll listen to Sunny Forecast again. All right. Um, definitely have a prayer here uh, that we don't get passed up. She mentioned the Sunny well, we're sunny forecast, but sorry, we didn't do that. <laughs> God did. Uh, and he didn't pass us up today. He always brings uh, sun and joy into our hearts. So we're, we'll sing, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. A flat. A flat. Thank you. We bring our own piano. <laughs> me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. Spring of all my comfort, more than life for me. When I will in earth beside thee, though my hands at thee, Savior, Savior. Let us come before God in prayer. Holy God, maker of heaven and earth, we come before you this day. It is you who placed the stars in the heavens and created all things on earth. And you also care for each one of us. We glorify you this day for you are an awesome God Lord, thank you for the gift of this day, the gift of life and breath, the gift of sight and hearing, the gift of voice, 
Lord, you have awakened all of our senses. The smell of the flowers, the birds singing, the warmth of the sun on our skin. You have made us to live fully in you. We thank you for the joys of this past week, for vacation time for Rhonda and Eric, for days of rest, for the joy of proms, the joy of graduations, the joy of birthdays and anniversaries, despite the number that may have been reached, and because of the number that is reached. For Lord, you are a God of celebration and joy, and the joy of life comes through you. We would ask now that you would continue to be with those who are healing, who've recently undergone procedures. Be with those who may not have shared, but have a procedure coming up. And we ask your blessing and your strength upon them. We uplift the Ropp family, especially Sharon, in the death of her grandfather. And ask that you would guide them in their season of grief. Lord, we come together here in community at Cadoris, and so often we don't know what's happening in the lives of those who surround us. So now we pause and we pray for those who are sitting beside us. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are behind us. We pray for the children who are over in Grow Group and their leaders. And we pray for those who are in front of us. Lord, we ask for your care for this community of believers. Be with us, Lord, and give strength to each and guide us in all our decision making when that becomes necessary, especially when we are facing health issues. For you are the great physician and you know our every need. And now we pray for the leaders of this church. We pray that you would give them wisdom and discernment. We pray for leaders in our communities, on our school boards. We pray for the leaders of our nation, for you have ordained them to lead in this time and in this space. We pray mostly for the healing of our nation. For if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and seek my face, then will you heal their land. God's promise for God's people. And may your will be done. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay, are you awake yet? No, we're probably putting you to sleep. Sorry about that. But we do have a little uh, brighter music here uh, that we enjoy singing, and we hope you'll enjoy it too. One, one thing I forgot to mention earlier, York, the York chapter celebrated its 75th anniversary this last fall. And uh, we all, York chapter was also one that created a lot of other chapters in this area. And now we compete with all of them. <laughs> but uh, we have a good time singing and just learning more about the craft. And it, it is a blessing. But uh, when I wake up in the morning, I start thinking, am I feeling OK? Most of the time when I greet people out here, I say, I'm just jolly. And some people laugh. I don't know why. <laughs> but right now, we're going to sing this one because we're going to tell you how we're feeling at Sunny Forecast. Go ahead. Well, I woke up this morning feeling fine. I woke up with heaven on my mind. 
I woke up with joy in my soul, cause I knew my Lord had control. He had control. Well, I knew I was walking in the light, and I've been on my knees in the night, and I prayed to the Lord gave a sign. And now I'm feeling mighty fine. Well, I'm feeling mighty fine. Mighty fine. Yes, I'm feeling fine. I got heaven, heaven, on, my heaven on my mind. Heaven on my mind. Don't you know? Oh, I wanna go. I wanna go. Yes, I wanna go. Well, I'm milk and honey flow. Milk and honey flow. Milk and honey flow. There's a light that shines, that shines, shines, shines down inside this heart. On a mind. I got heaven, 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 heaven on my mind. mind. I'm feeling mighty fine. I'm feeling mighty fine. And all God's people said, Amen. Yeah, I hope you're feeling fine too, especially after that. Our scripture passage for today comes from Psalm 31, 1 to 4. Listen for God's word. Lord, I seek refuge in you. Let me never be disgraced. Save me by your righteousness. Listen closely to me. Rescue me quickly. Be a rock of refuge for me, a mountain fortress to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. You lead and guide me because of your name. You will free me from the net that is secretly set for me, for you are my refuge. God's word for God's people this day. The Lord is our rock and refuge. Can I have a witness to that? Have any of you ever felt that God is your rock? Say amen. amen. You know, when we're in the midst of some difficult times, we hold on to God and we seek his permanence in the midst of all the other stuff of life. I was thinking as I was sitting here listening to the I am fine, uh, another two months, and we'd have an anniversary of the thing that you went through last year, Bruce, around this time, when you were really going through some difficulties. And we all have those times where we, we seem to not be progressing forward. But God as our rock and refuge is an image that King David, the writer of the Psalms, used often in the writing of the Psalms. And we go back to that book today. Let's look at the image of rocks throughout the biblical <clears throat> writings. The word rock is found 106 times in the Bible, but there are also many references to stones. Some of the passages reference rocks used in building of the altars to worship God. Other passages reference the stones that were thrown at the sinful prostitute <clears throat> or the stoning of Stephen, which is in the New Testament book of Acts, the beginning of the church at Pentecost. And by the way, next week is celebration of Pentecost on May 28th. <clears throat> Rocks or stones are also used in the images of the path that Christ leads us on. We also have the famous picture of Christ holding on to his rock in the Garden of Gethsemane, holding on to his God in prayer. Now, some of you may know that my husband Dick and I section hiked the Appalachian Trail from about 2004 to 2016. And some of you out here are also familiar, familiar with the Appalachian Trail. But I am here today to testify that it is truly not a walk in the park. 
It is not an easy walk. Now, yeah, portions throughout the trail may be easy, and there are some in the Shenandoah Park that are some of the best easy portions to walk. But there are a lot of really hard sections because the trail follows the Appalachian Mountain Range here in the east for 2,180 miles. In 2022, they added four miles to it in case somebody's going to argue that point. Anyway, we hiked about 800 miles in six states. And from that experience, we learned a lot about rocks. <clears throat> and we also learned to appreciate the imagery of rocks as needed on our spiritual journey, which coincided with our hike. Now, rocks are a constant on the trail. So we saw lots of rocks. Remember the children's story? I collect them. Now that's a story in itself because Dick got a little bit ticked off when uh, he found out on day two of day 10, <clears throat> after we had weighed our backpacks for the precise weighing and to not have such a heavy load that I had already put a rock in my backpack. Didn't like that too much. But there were big ones on the trail and there were little ones. There were whole mountains that seemed like one big rock, especially in Maine and New Hampshire. Now, if any of you have ever been to Australia or seen pictures of the Ayers Rock, anybody out here? You know what I mean by the A-Y-E-R-S rock? Oh, wow. But you can identify with a solid mass of rock through looking at a picture of the Ayers Rock. It's huge. It's actually 986 feet high, jutting straight, straight up out of the earth. And if you were to walk around the base of it, you would actually walk for five miles. That's pretty big. The first image that I would like to share with you concerning the trail is one that we encountered often. As you can see, the tree is literally growing through and out of a rock along the trail. Its roots were clinging to the rock and going down between the rocks, searching for the soil underneath it, actually searching for nourishment. As you look up the trail on that picture, you can see other larger trees. And some that we passed on the trail were 30 or 50 or even 100 years old. And the roots around of those trees went deep into the soil, seeking nourishment. Now you can transpose that to a picture in your mind's eye of how we cling to God. Can you think of a time when you were be going through some difficulties and you reached out to God for solace and strength? You see, when our faith seems to be weakened by the storms of life, because of our deep roots of faith, we're carried through the tough times. Can I hear an amen to that? David, the writer of the psalm, reveals his need for God and gives us this psalm to help us through the difficulties. David clung to God like the roots of this tree cling to the rock. That gave David the stability that he needed. That gave David the strength that he needed. And God became a refuge for David. And he can be the same for us. As we look at this particular psalm, the universality of it means that anyone could come to the psalm and use it when they were, going, when they were looking for strength. It does not name a particular trouble, but in verse 2 identifies that God has come to the psalmist's rescue. In verse 4, it says, free me from the trap. Again, not naming a particular trap, such as addiction or financial problems or health issues, but it makes it universal so that we can insert our particular problem into this psalm. That is an entrapment for us and hinders us in our relationship with God. What David had done for the early Israelites and what he still does for us today is to give us, in a sense, a form of therapy through this psalm. David's words are therapeutic. 
and they allow the reader to express sorrow and grief, first by owning David's sorrow and then inserting our own. Many of David's psalms also allow us to express alienation and hurt, and then the psalmist will move us into a relationship with our God, our rock, and our refuge. <clears throat> How many of you have heard of the rock? Maybe I need to give you another clue. The rock says, anybody? Thank you, Dwayne Johnson, the WWF wrestler from the late 1900s. I mean the late 99, 1990s, excuse me. The Rock entered his name for a much, earned his name for a much different reason from our focus on God today. As a nine-time world champion wrestler, a seven-time WWF champion and a five-time tag team champion. Are you getting excited about this, folks? <laughs> the Rock really made a name for himself. Now, Johnson was a very articulate man, and you're going to hear some of my bias against WWF now coming through. He was very articulate, but that was not something that you witnessed in his wrestling. You see, Johnson actually grew up part-time in Hawaii and then moved to Bethlehem, PA, where he then played football in the very competitive Lehigh Valley Conference. He went on to play football at the University of Miami and then went into wrestling in the late 90s and early 2000s. He graduated from Miami University with a degree in criminology and physiology. Dwayne, the rock of the WWF, was very different from the rock we hold on to in the midst of life's trials. Johnson took a wrong path as he was immersed in the <clears throat> entertainment world of WWF. You see, there were many bad decisions made and it seemed as if his whole life was going downhill. And then Johnson found his rock. One night, a little boy who had come backstage at the wrestling event challenged him to come to faith because, according to the little boy, many people look up to you, Mr. Johnson. Johnson began his walk of faith and turned to God and found the firm foundation that he needed in life and has been a positive influence for many young children and athletes. In 2006, Johnson founded the Dwayne Johnson Rock Foundation which works with at-risk children and children who are terminally ill, a totally different Johnson from back in the 1990s. Johnson found his rock. Johnson retired from wrestling in 2019 and is now an actor and a film producer. So just think about what kind of positive influence he might continue to make in the future in that arena. When we walk in faith, we are on a solid path. Often on the trail, Dick and I found ourselves walking on and over huge slabs of rock, solid foundations that firmly held us. And this is how we want God to be in the midst of the trials. The psalmist says in verse 2 that God is a fortress, a secure area of protection for us. Now, often while we are hiking, we have some difficult or extremely difficult areas that we need to overcome, that we need to either ascend or descend. This picture is indicative of one of those areas. Folks, you're looking at a portion of the trail that followed a stream and a waterfall for six tenths of a mile, and it was an up the whole time for us. At times we were dragging ourselves and our packs through narrow rock crevices. At times we were walking up steep, steep rock ledges. And at times we were trying to navigate around fallen trees and logs that were a result of the harsh winter of past years. It was a slow go. It was some of the most difficult climbing I've had to do in all the miles that I hiked the trail. 
Does this sound like life, folks? Sometimes we have things happen, things that are totally unexpected, and that then life becomes an uphill battle. Sometimes there are health difficulties that cause changes to our bodies. We drag ourselves through each day, and there is no energy. There was one point in Maine where Dick ascended through a difficult up in the rocks, and then I pushed his pack up to him, and then pushed my pack up, and then he pulled me up through that particular rock. It was tough. It was time consuming, just like when we have illnesses. And I've told others that Dick has hiked a lot more miles than me because of some of his backtracking to help me through the different areas. Well, in life, we sometimes get stuck in difficult spaces, either because of someone else's decision or our own decision, right or wrong, and it causes us to stop. Maybe that decision concerned a job that was not going well, or maybe the decision was a job termination. Yes, all of this is like a difficult uphill climb on rocky terrain. But when we get over the rough spots or get to the top, we can see the bigger picture. We can see out and beyond at, at the promise of things to come. This helps me to think of God's abundance, his love that is never ending in the midst of the difficulties of life. From Psalm 31, going a little bit further ahead in the psalm, from 14 and 16, I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. God is a God of overflowing love. That is the God whom we serve. I hope that I've given you some encouragement for when you're going through those tough times because we all experience those times. One minute things are going well and the next we're on a precipice overlooking a steep drop-off point. But our loving God is with us, has maybe led us to this point in order to test us, and our loving God will guide us when we turn to him. Let us remember these psalms, for they are a source of therapy, and they can be a healing balm. The psalms give us hope through an understanding of our God, for God is our rock and our refuge. Pray with me. Holy God, we thank you for being there for us. We thank you for being the rock that we cling to in the midst of life's trials. May your word continue to guide our every step toward that promise of new life with you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
We'll stop there. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll send you uh, out with a blessing, if you'll wait. hang with us just for a moment. <coughs> uh, let's give me an F. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. <laughs> May, May the road rise to me. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rain fall soft upon your feet. Until we meet again, may